All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Austin Erickson. I will be giving this talk today on behalf of my colleagues over at the University of Central Florida uh, at the Synthetic Reality Lab. Um, so thank you all for attending. Um, now, all of you in the audience probably have a smartphone in your pocket or in your hand. Uh, we use these types of devices in a wide, wide variety of different environments and contexts. Uh, we're using them in very well-lit environments, we're using them in dimly lit environments, uh, and everything in between. Uh, we're using them while we're walking, commuting, sometimes driving, um, and static environments and dynamic environments, and again, everything in between. Um, now, as augmented reality researchers, we have this dream that one day we'll be able to use our AR devices in the same manner. Um, and this means that for each of those other contexts and uh, types of environments, uh, all of those places where we currently use our phones, we need to be able to use those AR devices uh, in exactly the same way. Um, but anyone who's used an optical see-through AR device knows that uh, it's sometimes kind of difficult to see the content on the device depending on uh, what environment you're in. So for example, if you're uh, on the beach and you want to check the weather uh, on your optical see-through device, you may uh, expect that the user interface would look something like this, uh, but in reality, it ends up looking something like this. Um, the dark colors of the UI get very transparent. Uh, that's just due to the additive nature of the UI. Um, and that's the same way no matter what your environment is. Uh, and then the bright uh, white color of the UI also becomes very transparent in this case because of that high level of environment lighting. Um, so we're losing contrast and that UI becomes very difficult to see. Um, now in the existing literature, there's been a couple ways to approach uh, fixing this contrast or enhancing contrast in these types of situations. Uh, one of them is to uh, change the color of the UI, to adapt to the user's environment uh, based on the appearance of it. Um, so in this case, changing from a white color to a red may improve contrast for the user. And then of course we can take kind of the opposite approach and do a modification to the headset itself and maybe increase the amount of tint on the front of the headset um, to increase the con contrast of the virtual content. Uh, but of course this decreases the contrast for all of the other objects in the uh, user's physical environment. Um, so we want to work towards these um, adaptive user interfaces for uh, AR devices. That way we can reach that dream of ubiquitous AR. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to know exactly what the conditions are uh, in which the content starts to become difficult to distinguish. You know, when do we need to use uh, enhancements and adaptive UIs? And when can we get away with using maybe the user's preferences or the developer's preferences? for that UI's appearance. Um, so this led us to two different research questions. Our first one is, uh, what, is the what is the range of environment illuminances uh, in which contrast enhancements should be employed? Uh, and then our second is, how is the luminance contrast of virtual imagery affected by environment illuminance level? Um, so to look at these, we uh, created a, a pretty simple experiment where we had an uh, optical see-through uh, HMD positioned directly in front of a dimmable daylight lamp. Um, so these lamps are capable of reaching very high levels of illuminance. Um, we were able to position the two such that we could put a light meter into the headset at the user's left eye position and make illuminance measures from that position. So we're getting, getting an idea of how the light is from the user's perspective. Um, so we set up several conditions. We had six different levels of lighting um, achieved by uh, dimming that, uh, that uh, daylight lamp. Uh, these were between 0 lux and 20,000 lux. Uh, we used two different head mounts, uh, the HoloLens 1 and the Ho HoloLens 2. Um, these were chosen uh, just based on their availability for us uh, at our lab. Uh, and then finally we made four different measurements uh, four different sets of measurements for each com each of these combinations of conditions. 
Uh, so the first was made as a direct measurement of the light just to establish the illuminance coming from the light. Uh, then we would put the headset down with it powered off uh, to get an idea on how the tint was reducing the incoming light from the user's perspective. Uh, finally, uh, we would turn the headset on and do a measurement with the screen rendering all black or transparent. Um, this was to get an idea on if the ambient, um, there's sometimes an ambient glow when you have the headset powered on even though it's not rendering anything. Uh, so we wanted to get a measure there. And then finally with the uh, display on and rendering all white. Um, so with those last two measurements, we can calculate the amount of contrast from the user's point of view uh, based on that combination of conditions. Um, so our results look something like this. Uh, on the left side, we have the HoloLens 1, and on the right side, we have the HoloLens 2. Uh, on our x-axis for both graphs, we have those six environment illuminance levels from 0 to 20,000 lux. And on our y-axis, we have the measured illuminance that we got with the light meter from the user's left eye position. Um, so the graphs themselves, the top line, the red and the orange, uh, is when the display is rendering all white. And then the bottom line, the blue or the green, uh, is when the display is rendering all black. Um, so looking at these graphs, we can see that the um, area between the two curves can be thought of as contrast. Uh, and it's at its maximum when we're in those low light conditions, and then it slowly reduces, uh, rather actually quickly reduces, as we increase that environment illuminance uh, up to our, our maximum levels. So for the HoloLens 1, we see that we have this um, convergence occur right around 1,000 lux, and for the HoloLens 2, we see that occur right around 10,000 lux. So at those two levels, um, the contrast is becoming so small that uh, the user is definitely going to have trouble. Um, of course, an easier way to look at these figures is to convert those illuminance values into uh, contrast values. So we did this using the uh, Michelson uh, contrast equation. Um, so in this figure, we have our y-axis, which is that level of contrast between 0 and 1, uh, and then our x-axis is the same. Uh, for the blue plot, that is our HoloLens 1, and the red is our HoloLens 2. Uh, so what we can see here is that from 0 to 10 lux, we're achieving maximum contrast, which is to be expected. It's a, a very dim environment for those two cases, uh, and we're reaching a value of 1 just because uh, the particular um, light meter that we used is not able to get measurements between 0 and 1 lux. So uh, they round up to 1, when in reality they'd be around like 0.99 uh, or somewhere around there. Um, so as we approach 100 lux, uh, these are kind of the uh, range of, co uh, range of uh, illuminances that correlate to very dim indoor environments or dark outdoor environments. Um, so the HoloLens 1 reduces to about uh, 0.3 uh, for contrast, and the HoloLens 2 reduces to about 0.7. Um, our next range of illuminances is between 100 and 1000 lux. This roughly correlates to uh, indoor lighting conditions, so it encompasses pretty much all of our uh, working environments when we're indoors. Um, and we can see that the HoloLens 1 reduces all the way down to about 0.05, and the HoloLens 2 continues to reduce to about uh, 0.25. Um, so they're performing okay in this area, but certainly not the best. Uh, then we reach the definite uh, trouble area here. This is um, the range of uh, illuminances which uh, um, correlate to very bright conditions. Uh, so what you'd find outside on a summer day with the sun out um, for a thousand lux and higher. Um, so again, these contrast levels are reducing. The HoloLens 1 reduces practically to 0, uh, and the HoloLens 2 reduces down to about 0 0.05. Um, so it's, uh, we're, we're seeing this downward trend in contrast as environment illuminance level increases. Um, but we already knew this, right? You know, we didn't need a study to just tell us that. You know, anyone who's worn an optical see-through headset outside knows that it's difficult to see when you're uh, in a bright uh, outdoor environment. Um, so what are we really gaining from this? Um, 
So we have uh, two existing uh, sets of guidelines that we looked up here, and one of them is a set from NASA, and the other one's a set from the Australian government, uh, which describe uh, minimum acceptable contrast ratios. Um, so their guidelines say that uh, roughly 30% is the minimum acceptable contrast, contrast threshold. Um, so if we look for that value back on that figure, uh, we see that this occurs right around 100 lux for the HoloLens 1 and around 900, you know, close to 1,000 lux for the HoloLens 2. So what this means is that from these guidelines, these two headsets are only usable up to those uh, thresholds and that the area highlighted under the curves here is the uh, range of illuminances uh, for each of these devices where we need to uh, start employing either adaptive UIs or contrast enhancing measures uh, to be able to better present that information to the user. Um, so these are going to be different for every single display that's out there. Uh, and we expect that uh, as more and more optical see-through displays are um, you know, implemented and we get our hands on them as researchers, uh, similar studies to this are going to have to be repeated that way we can see the range in which they perform well uh, and the range of illuminances in which they perform not so well. Um, so a couple of concluding remarks here. Um, we saw that the HoloLens 1 uh, and HoloLens 2 are usable up to uh, kind of a threshold limit according to these existing standards. Uh, because of this, we strongly recommend that um, any studies involving uh, user interfaces and optical see-through AR displays, uh, we recommend that you use um, a light meter and at least get some baseline measurements for the environment and luminance. Um, these can be obtained you know, from Amazon, very cheap, um, and the measurements are really quick and easy to perform. Uh, and it would give us a whole lot more information as to how these um, ranges of environment level affect the user and their interactions with the UI. Um, so finally, we need more research to identify the usability thresholds for the other optical see-through displays, as I mentioned, and this will continue to be a problem as more and more displays are, are coming out. Um, we need to identify contrast standards for optical see-through AR, um, and this needs to be done through user testing. You know, it could very well be that that 30% standard that we looked at here uh, might not work for optical see-through. Uh, we may need a different standard uh, for the specific type of device. Uh, and then finally, we need uh, methods of enhancing contrast for optical see-through displays, whether they're hardware or software-based methods. Um, so thank you all so much for your time um, and for attending my talk here. Uh, I will be around in the chat to answer any questions if you're here live. Uh, otherwise, feel free to email me at uh, ericksona uh, at knights.ucf.edu uh, if you have any questions or just want to chat. Um, so thank you again. Bye-bye.